tell me about these uh, additional comments, uh, statements about GMOs, and let me know if these are true regarding the genetic engineering technique. Genetic engineering is just an extension of natural breeding. Genetic engineering is precise and the results are predictable. Gen genetic engineering of crops is no more risky than mutation breeding, which is widely accepted and not regulated. Cisgenesis is a safe form of GM because no foreign genes are involved. Um, and let me go, uh, yeah, so let's just go through that one quickly Any on those. So let's go through that quickly. Well, I'll just say that these statements can appear from industry and sometimes they can also appear from governments because unfortunately in industry has a very strong influence on governments, on intergovernmental organizations, on universities, on all these institutions that we trust. So we may hear these statements from institutions that we think are credible, but unfortunately they're not representing our best interests, nor are they representing reality. Okay, as a plant breeder, I can tell you that genetic engineering is very, very different from traditional breeding because in traditional breeding, we can only breed closely related species. With genetic engineering, what they're doing for the first time is they're, they're actually crossing genetic material from different kingdoms that don't normally do. So, so you can start putting bacteria or virus particles into plants. This, and the fact is we, we do not have the precise science to know exactly what are the long-term um, effects. The, we know that the offspring of, of these, when, when they, they cross out, that, 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 the, that there is incredible variability, there's unpredictability, the, the other, yeah, I suppose the best thing to do, and I'll probably let um, Jeffrey talk about it, because when he talked about genetic roulette, what we're actually doing is playing Russian roulette with the basis of life. We're using a very, very out of date 1960s idea of, of the way the genome works. And the fact is the genome or the, you know, the, the gene structure is far more complex than the simplistic ideas that they use when they start inserting a gene. And you know, I suppose the best way to say it, we're playing God and we don't know what, what the hell we are doing. Yeah, I, I would like to, to add to that, that um, the, 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 the gene technology issue is part of a very much larger problem. And the problem is that technology at large is out of control, okay? So it's not just biotechnology, it is nanotechnology, it is artificial intelligence, it is robot killing machines. There is a whole host of technologies which the private sector is developing willy-nilly ad lib all around the world um, and which are not controlled by any government anywhere. Uh, they're so far ahead of the, of the regulatory and legislatory uh, processes that it's not funny. Um, the genies are out of the bottle in all of these areas. Every single one of these, of these technologies, these super technologies, has the capacity to do us terrible harm, um, but nobody is nobody's shining a warning light, you know, except for you, ladies and gentlemen, really. Uh, the, the danger is that we're going to be devoured by these technologies in different ways. I mean, think of nanotechnology. You're talking about terribly, terribly small particles entering into the brains and the embryos and the bodies of every single human on Earth. And yet, you know, what, what attempts are, is there to regulate nanotechnology, uh, you know, biotechnology, or you know, not just uh, in, in the area of crops and food, but but also, you know, people are tinkering with wild viruses and doing strange things to them in in dark laboratories, funded by the U.S. government, the Chinese government. You know, I'm not a conspiracist, I'm a reader of the science, okay? And I can tell you, I do not like what I see, that large grants are being given to institutions to carry out, to try to produce, uh, to uprate the, the potential of disease-causing organisms to cause more disease, because they want to experiment with it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's utter madness. 
Um, so what we actually need is a way of controlling all new technologies, not just one at a time. You try and control them one at a time, it's like controlling chemicals one at a time. It'll take you a third of a million years. If you, all technologies have to come under some kind of regulation and scrutiny to say, are they good for people or are they bad for people? You know, this has got to happen at the global level. It can't just happen at national level. Thanks. I'd like to talk about CRISPR technology in particular, because that's an interesting technology that is uh, very exciting to the agrochemical industry, because they believe now that they can create things like ground up ready crops, glyphosate resistance without invoking GMO technology. So they've managed to get the governments to agree that this CRISPR technology is not a GMO because what they're doing is they're actually going in and modifying the actual gene that the plant originally had to turn it into a version of that gene that is resistant to the, to the herbicide. So they can now roll out all these new crops that have resistance to, uh, to the chemical herbicides and they don't have to call it a GMO because it's CRISPR, but CRISPR is definitely not safe. And so there's many studies coming out recently that are showing, you know, again, they talk about precision technology, but actually they're finding it's doing all kinds of strange things they didn't expect. And it's really very much un an unknown question as to what kind of to toxicity the actual CRISPR uh, um, stuff is going to cause on top of, of course, allowing them to produce uh, resistant crops that are not uh, labeled, not don't need to be labeled GMO. Ronnie? Well, I think it's very important that we <clears throat> realize that industry is working overtime to uh, keep on doing the same dangerous things they're doing. And one of the things that bothers me is uh, vegans uh, and vegetarians being attracted to these so-called <clears throat> plant-based meats and dairy products that are not plant-based. I mean, if you want to eat a veggie burger, great with organic ingredients made from vegetables, that's one thing. But what the Impossible Burger, the, mm -hmm. you know, the robot ice cream, I can't even believe they're actually just using these names. And then they exhibit at the Natural and Organic Products Expo uh, last month in Ana Anaheim. The featured new products at Natural Products Expo were gene, spli uh, gene edited, lab engineered fake foods that are gonna have a disastrous impact uh, <clears throat> on the environment as well as small farmers and people around the world. So we gotta fight over time. A lot of the millennials, for, because they don't like factory farming and animal cruelty, uh, because they've read this propaganda from industry about um, you know, how animal husbandry is a major contributor. Uh, we need to fight these battles. So I'm looking forward to suing some of these companies mm -hmm. in the next uh, few <laughs> months. And uh, we got to do this. I'd like to follow up on the CRISPR piece. Uh, because of the, the alarming rate in which governments are allowing gene edited organisms to be deregulated. Uh, India is the most recent. So in CRISPR, you have a molecular scissors that cuts and you have a guide that finds the location of the DNA. One thing that everyone knows is it gets cut all over the place, not just in the targeted place. Once it's cut, it's not the engineer that puts it back together. It's the cell's own repair mechanisms, and we have no control over it. There are deletions, insertions, mutations that can occur even something called chromothripsis, where the entire chromosome gets shattered and reformed in a haphazard way. During the process of repair, the genome repair mechanism can grab DNA from the Petri dish. It can grab some of the bacterial DNA that was used to get the gene edited machinery in there. It can grab uh, DNA from goats and cows because they often use the serum from goats and cows. So you end up with mice and, and cows with foreign DNA that are not typically evaluated. When CRISPR is used to knock out a gene, they assume the gene is, is shut off and everything's safe. But one third of the time it fails, and often when it fails, it produces a truncated protein. And that truncated protein can be an allergen or a toxin. Now, 
once you've created the gene edited cell, you have to replicate it through tissue culture or cloning that introduces hundreds or thousands of other mutations. When you bring in the gene machinery that causes insertion mutations and fragments throughout the DNA. These changes not only change the genome, but the epigenetic effects, how genes express and epigenetic effects from CRISPR have been passed on to at least 10 generations of mice. And we have a situation where in one, in one article in Nature, they looked at three different CRISPR studies on human embryos, and they called it chromosomal mayhem. <laughs> so it is a disaster scientifically, and yet the biotech industry has convinced government after government that it is safe, predictable, and natural. So that's one of the campaigns that our institute is initiating is to re is to show the truth to these regulators and lawmakers about CRISPR. <laughs>